Hello and welcome to DIY Ideas. Today we're doing some stretchy fabric and stitches. So there are several different ways how you can do this. What I did in my um, sewing beginnings is always do a regular straight stitch. And what would happen then is as soon as I would put the piece of clothing I was doing on, the stitches would rip. And that's because the straight stitch is not appropriate for stretchy fabric. So what I want to show you is some elastic stitches. So here are some of the stretchier types of fabric that we can use and I'm going to show you some stitches for these types of fabric. So if you're doing a stretchy type of fabric then of course you're going to need a stretchy stitch for it so that it works well with the fabric and the project in the end. So of course you want to make sure that you have the appropriate equipment. So I'm going to show you what you're going to need for today. I'm going to do um, several different, actually three different techniques, how you can work with stretchy fabric. Then I'm also going to give you some tips how you can work with it um, in different ways. Before I get started, as I said, we're going to do the equipment first. So you can see here the, some threads, um, my fabric in the back as well, and some needles. So I'm not using regular sewing needles for the sewing machine, but rather stretchy ones. So this one is called the Jersey needle. It is meant for stretchy fabric or Jersey fabric as it's sometimes called. And then here you have a different kind, but the same thing pretty much. So if you decide to use a regular needle, what might happen is that the fabric gets stuck in the needle or it just doesn't work as well with the fabric as you would like it to. So here you can see different sizes or thicknesses of the needle. So depending on what kind of project you want to work on, you might need more or less. So I have here a size of 80 and this is good for several layers of fabric if you're doing several layers. So here is just some regular cotton stretchy fabric, usually something that you would see on t-shirts, but then I also wanted to show you different kinds like um, something like a sweater. Um, so in both cases you need a stretch needle. So as far as the thread goes, make sure to use something that's appropriate for stretching if you're unsure the people at the store where you can buy these can always give good advice, so don't be afraid to ask them what matches your fabric. So instead of starting with a whole project like with this fabric, I wanted to show you some basic steps. So you can see here that I have some fabric leftovers and that's what I always recommend when trying out new stuff with your sewing machine. So the zigzag stitch is what I'm going to show you first and you can find this on any sewing machine ever. So it's definitely something that belongs to the basics of sewing and you can see here why it's really cool. I really like to show um, how stretchy it is by just pulling on it and you can see horizontally and vertically as well. It works really, really fine. It still looks cool. So you can of course also change up the width of your stitch. It can be more or less zigzaggy. So you can see here when it's not as wide, this is what it looks like. The narrower your stitch is though, the less stretchy it's gonna be. So make sure to be aware of that when you're working on different kinds of projects. Also, another cool tip that's really easy but makes totally a big difference is to not stretch or pull on your fabric as you glide it through the needle. So you just want to kind of push it through without stretching it or pulling on it in a weird way because that's when the stitch is going to work best. So you can find the zigzag stitch in any sewing machine. I wanted to show you what it looks like in um, the instructions that I have. So you can see here um, the elastic stitch and basically also the instructions on how to um, set up your sewing machine so that it works this way. Um, so this might depend on the type of your sewing machine, but you definitely have this option in every single one. 
So you see here, these are kind of to the side um, and from the other side you can't um, see it. it. It just looks like a regular stitch. So in this case, um, this is kind of a sided or lopsided, I guess, zigzag stitch that's even more elastic and stretchy. And then I want to show you another stitch. I think it's called an overlock stitch, but you can let me in the comments if you have a different name for it, if you know it. And yeah, um, this is also something that was an option on my sewing machine. I think most should have them as well, so you can see here what it looks like. It has kind of like, almost like little teeth, and you can see here that it's also super stretchy. So if you don't know how to set your sewing machine up so that you get these stitches, I definitely recommend looking at the instructions. That's what they're there for. And um, yeah, it's called an overlock, at least here. And I think it works really nice. In my book, it says it's um, good for thin and stretchy fabric. So yeah, sometimes you can choose from different ones that are all appropriate for the type of project that you're doing and the type of fabric. So you might even have a choice just based on aesthetics and what you find easier to work with. There is also a special sewing machine foot that you can use for stretchy types of fabric. So it helps with guiding the fabric so that you get straight stitches. So there's also one extra stitch that's sometimes called an industry stitch, but again, let me know if you have another name for it. But you can see here what we have with the um, overlock stitch that we just did. So you can of course change this up and make it kind of into a seaming stitch like this. And um, yeah, so what I um, like to do is work with stretchy fabric because you don't have to seam it most of the time because they don't fray but in case you want to, this is how. And yeah, in some cases you can work with um, your double overlock stitch. Um, so this is for things like sweaters or in general stuff that's knitted and you would like to work with it. So you can see here that it closes it up from both sides. So it's a little bit sturdier and you can see on the outside, it still looks nice and neat. So this way nothing frays when you do the stitch. So what sometimes happens is that you get really wavy edges of fabric on the other side of the stitch or that it's a little bit more stretched out than you would like it to be. So for me what works just fine is just making it a little bit damp and then going over it with um, a regular iron. But um, this, of course, depends on the amount of waves that you have. And I'm also going to show you how you can work with stretchy fabric if you want a straight stitch. So you can see here what I mean. So there's nothing zigzaggy going on. It's just a regular straight stitch. Sometimes we just really want to have a nice stitch um, with, without anything else going on. So I'm going to show you how you can do that right away. So in this case, you're going to need a special type of thread, which is usually called the elastic thread, and it's a little bit stretchier than regular ones, so if I pull on it, you can definitely see that it stretches. So um, here it's just important that you do this on the top as well as the bottom thread of your sewing machine so that it's stretchy on both sides. If you have just one, then the other is going to rip, and that's not something that we want. So these are usually pretty affordable and you can find them anywhere where you usually find your sewing stuff. So it's something that's pretty easy to find. You won't have any trouble looking for it. And yeah, when you do a stitch like that and when it's a straight stitch, then it is still stretchy just because the thread itself is stretchy and it looks great on the outside. I really like to use this one when I want a really nice straight line like this. 
So of course, these are just the basics. There are many different styles and techniques that you can do with stretchy types of fabric. So let me know in the comment section if you have any special tips or tricks or suggestions how you do these. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. Feel free to let me know if you'd like to learn about other sewing basics or some projects that you'd like us to do together. I hope you enjoyed. Let us know by shooting a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more similar videos. And if you do, don't forget the notification bell so you never miss a new project. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!